A lot of people get a lot of bites on swim baits. They knock them sideways. They do all kinds of things and they set the hook and they're just swinging on air. It may not be that you swung on air. It may be that the hook just didn't drive through the bait in order to get it in there to them. So when you're throwing a weedless hook and a weedless bait on these swim baits, make sure and try to get you some kind of lubrication on this hook. If you can find a lighter wire hook and you're not in super, super heavy cover and actually trying to force them out, if any of you guys seen the Toho event I won back with FLW, I was fishing super heavy, deep hydrilla. I was fishing eight, nine feet deep hydrilla and throwing in an open hole on the back side of this hydrilla line and I'd set the hook on them and I'd get them coming, I'd ski them across the top. There was one fish though, it was probably the biggest fish I had on the whole tournament. I had a good hook set on it, I had it come and drug it halfway back to the boat, it buried up in the grass and I'm trying to force it out of there way too hard, but it straightened my hook out, I lost the fish. So these hooks are very, very necessary in heavy cover, this bigger wire hook, but you get to use braid in that kind of situation. But when you have to drop down the fluorocarbon, the diameter of these hooks and being able to drive it in becomes harder. You gotta use a stiffer rod, heavier line so it don't break, and uh, you know try to get the penetration. And a lot of that's gonna be based off of that slickness I'm telling you about to use to get that hook to slide through. So here's the, uh, this is again the Scotch Bar Tackle. I'm gonna show you the Zoom Swimmer. The Zoom Swimmer is a solid hollow belly. So the only hole you got in the, in the Zoom Swimmer is in the tail. And it goes all the way through and it's just completely hollow. So what I do with these guys is I take this X-Acto knife and I make it just like the Scottsboro. I cut it right down the middle of its belly and I open it up so I can get that same penetration. I don't have one in here. I'm gonna rig one back up real quick for you. The screw lock's a big thing on these hooks too. I use the fattest screw lock I can so it don't waste the baits and it also keeps them good and secure. So you take and you just push this thing up there as hard as you can on these screw locks and you screw it down and it's hard to get started at, one, at the beginning. Once you get it started, it, it tightens on down. You tighten it down, get it as center as possible and you stick this thing through. In a regular hollow belly, again, if I hold it right here and I try to push it up, you don't have much bite on the hook. But as soon as you cut that belly and you get the bite, you see how much more hook we get? Because I cut that belly. That's a little secret that we don't tell a whole lot of people and y'all getting all of it firsthand right here on Bass U today. But that is a cool thing that we do. I open the hook up just a little bit and I get all of that action out of that thing and I still get the penetration. And it don't matter, even if I'm throwing this thing in heavy grass, if my, if my bait sits down like this, it don't bother me. There's some little keepers I can put under here on the hook to keep it from sliding down. But you'd be surprised because that hook's on top of this bait. Your line's here. So if you're coming all across a log, your line's coming over. Your hook's not hitting it unless it rolls sideways. It don't do that when you're making, keeping pressure on it. So it don't matter if that hook stays exposed. That just gives you a little extra penetration on the fish when it hits. Don't be worried about this being exposed unless it's just super heavy wood cover. It really does not matter. There's nine times out of 10, my bait looks like that when I make the cast. I don't worry about skin hooking it or nothing. I'll leave it open to help me get that hookup ratio. And if I get 10 bites, but only get one in, that's not good. I need to get them all in. But this is the eight out, three quarter ounce. But guys, this has been my money bait for a long time. It, it's out, I talk about it all the time. That's the eight out, three eighths ounce owner flashy swimmer. The little spinner on the bottom to a wire, it free floats so it don't get in the way of anything. And it's actually detachable. You can take this actually off of the hook if you don't like the flashy part. So if the water's super, super clear and they seem to not be, you know, they're a little bit finicky, this flash can actually drive them away. So I'll take this off in really clean water, but if it's got any kind of stain to it at all, or if there's a shad spawn going on, man, that looks like two shad swimming together when you throw that thing. That has been a great, great bait for me. This is a killer shad spawn bait. This is a killer grass bait anywhere that you want those swim bait and need to keep it weedless, these are my two go-tos right here. There's others I, I use and I play with, but these are the two mainstays. This is not a sales pitch, this is the real deal. I actually, some of these got teeth marks on them. I got these straight out of my box. So uh, check these out. Both of these are in a five inch. Now the six inches swim good, uh, seven inch, it's good, but I try to stay with five inches till I get my limit. Giant fish eat small baits. I've learned that since I've been fishing the tour. Uh, so don't be afraid to throw big baits, but don't be afraid of these five inch baits. Five inch baits are one of my favorites. So 
this is a secret that is really, this is the first year I'm talking about it. Um, I've always bought their products. And the information Bass University provides isn't your basic run-of-the-mill fishing video. This is specific information from A to Z to help you learn, get to the water, and become a better angler quickly.